The internet is ubiquitous today. Go back to 1996 though, and look at the top most visited websites. It was AOL, it was Yahoo, it was GeoCities and Netscape. How many people are using any of those websites or any of those services today? That is the way that I view the world because the world has changed so quickly just in my lifetime that now there are incredible new opportunities out there that when you were born, nobody even imagined would be opportunities. There are places like here in Bogota in Colombia that were considered off limits when you were born or when you were growing up. And now, for those who understand the way the world has changed, they are great opportunities. There are places that no one ever heard of before that are now great opportunities, like places like Georgia that people think is a U.S. state and don't even know it's its own country that is the sixth most business-friendly country in the world. The point is, the world has changed. I've been coming to Bogota and to Colombia for uh, the last five or six years now, and I've been astounded at what's happening. Now, the currency has gone down, and that has opened up even more opportunities, and it's made it more accessible for more people to get into things like the real estate market here. But to come to this country, a place that a lot of people where you and I are from would say, no, that's not safe. It's a dangerous place. Watch out. Even some people here say it's not safe because they've grown up thinking, they have to be worried. And yet I walk around at all hours of the day, at all hours of the night. Of course you take precautions. Of course you stay out of the bad neighborhoods that exist in every city. But the story of a country like Colombia is fascinating to me because it's a perfect example of the arbitrage opportunities we talk about where so many people don't want to come here on vacation. So many people don't want to invest here. And yet what do you have? You have Latin America's second most free economy. You have a place where you can get immigration benefits, you can get high rental yields, you can make all kinds of investments here. I think this country, and a lot of countries like it, have a great future. You know, I tell the story of watching the movie Entrapment, which came out in, I think, 1998, with Sean Connery, Catherine Zeta-Jones, and they were pulling a heist at the newly built Petronas Twin Towers in Malaysia. Now, I have a home in Malaysia. I've spent many, many years in Malaysia and, and come to know it very intimately. But what was interesting to me in the movie is that when you look at their apartment and the view outside of their apartment, it was, uh, Kuala Lumpur was essentially a, a kampong, a, a village, a Malay village. There were a lot of very you know, small houses, low-rise buildings. Now you go there, you come to my house, right next to the Petronas Twin Towers, you can't even see them because there are so many 50-story buildings. That happened in a period of 20 years. And almost no one outside of Asia even knows about it. You see, Malaysia built those towers because they wanted to put themselves on the map. It was the beginning of their quest to become a fully developed country, and they're well on track to do that. But yet, my parents want to come and visit me in Malaysia. They call their bank in the United States, and their bank says, well, please, whatever you do, you can't use our debit card because all of our cards are blocked in Malaysia because it's a very bad country. I've lived in Malaysia for years. I've brought so many people to Malaysia. Nobody has had a problem. No one's been the victim of fraud. Everyone I know who's been the victim of fraud has it's happened where they're from. It's happened in the United States. It's happened in Australia. It's happened in Canada. My entire quest here at Nomad Capitalist is finding the next big place. The next big thing. It's easy just to say, hey, I'm going to go to Singapore. It's easy to say, I'm going to go to New Zealand. And if you can afford to do that, then that's great. I personally don't want to live in New Zealand. Um, a lot of people who are watching aren't prepared for what it costs to invest and get into New Zealand and, and live there. But those are some of the places that people talk about. And what I know is, once everyone starts talking about a place in a circle, whether it's New Zealand for uh, ultra high net worth investors, whether it's Singapore as a place to bank, whether it's Paraguay as the fast, easy, cheap passport, once everyone is talking about something, it becomes like the shoeshine boy making stock recommendations before the Great Depression. When the shoeshine boy, as they said, is giving you stock tips, it's probably time to get out of the stock market. So the story goes. If you want to find the best deals, if you want to find the places that are untouched, 
you have to do what other people aren't willing to do. You have to stay ahead of the curve. This is what I'm doing. And what I've realized is there is not going to be one next Singapore. Singapore happened at a time when there wasn't that much competition before so many countries had the means or the reason to go out and, and make themselves into competitive places. Look at what's happened in my lifetime from the fall of Berlin, the Berlin Wall, the end of communism as it was known, uh, the rapid growth of middle classes in countries all around the world. The fact that when I was born, I couldn't have effectively lived in Malaysia is irrelevant to the fact of the fact that I can today. The fact that when I was born, you wouldn't want to live in Bogota and certainly not invest your money there does not mean there's not amazing opportunity today. And what I think so many people are looking for is some kind of big, bold, green light. And again, if, if, if you're one of the people that I work with who, who has $100 million and you want to go to Singapore, you can still do that. But when you get that big green light, that's the sign of an opportunity being turned off to so many people. Once the big green light is there, it's too late. You've got to find the place that no one else is talking about. You've got to get in early. And what fascinates me is talking to friends and family friends and, and people I've known through business throughout the years in, in, let's say, the United States, hearing from people who bought property in coastal towns in California you know, 40 years ago for you know, less than a million dollars, and now they have 10 and $20 million properties. The same thing exists all around the world. If you would have put a million dollars into Georgia, not even 40 years ago, but 20 years ago, you could have seen similar returns. There are countries right now that in some cases people are absolutely fleeing. In some cases, people are just very cautious of and they're staying away and it's not getting the press or maybe there's some bad press. You know, someone asked me recently, what happens when you, you, know, you see a protest in a country. Should, should we avoid those countries if there's protests? I said, no, that's the, that's the problem, is everyone runs from protests. Everyone runs from a little bit of bad press. And yet so few people spend the time on the ground putting in the time to figure out what really works. I can tell you what's gonna work in the next 20 years. Singapore will still work. Many people will have it be inaccessible to them. There will be new Singapores for banking. There will be new Singapores that have become great investment havens. There will be new places with low taxes. Those places, many of them already exist, but they're the places that people are afraid to go because they haven't gotten that green light. Just as the websites you frequent now versus 5, 10, 20 years ago have changed, so has the world. You know, The one thing I learned in the radio business was on the music side of the radio business, they said, if you have a market like Los Angeles, which has a lot of ethnic people, a lot of immigrants, you're never going to be able to play country music and be successful. The reason being that our musical tastes are formed when we're teenagers. That's what we call good music. It's why my parents think, you know, the Beatles are good music. And it's why, you know, whatever music we grew up listening to, that's good music. And everything else is like garbage. No, I don't want that. It's garbage. And for, I think in the same way, many of us, our, our views on the world were cemented at a time well before everything has changed. And it's time in the same way that you no longer get your news from AOL or use Netscape as your browser to refresh, to look at a place like Bogota, to look at a country like Colombia, to entirely change your mind and realize that the media's job is to be sensational. Their job is to tell you how bad everyone else has it. What's interesting is go to other countries and you can read about how bad your country has it, yet no one around you acknowledges that. And so you sit in the soup and think, well, Probably just best to stay here until that big green light comes on. The path to the next big thing is being open to the next big thing, being open to change, being open to something different, being open to something that most people aren't doing. Perhaps people are even going to laugh at you for doing. But the thing is, people laugh at you for being successful. They laugh at you for starting a business. They laugh at you for doing anything because most people don't want to be different. So if you do, they need to look at things that aren't popular yet so that you can truly be different. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. 
Number three, if you're not sure where to start but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.